You're tuned to Radio Kidnappers, the voice of Hawke's Bay. This is a program called Food for Life, and it's our pleasure, as always, to have in the hot seat. And now on YouTube, star of YouTube, Heather Barrow. How are you, Heather? I'm good, Ken. How so, are you? Say day to the team, Heather. Hey, everybody. <laughs> now, Heather is a clinical nutritionist. Tell us what that means, Heather. Uh, it just means that I see people with a variety of conditions and I look at everything. So I take a holistic approach, yes. looking at their lifestyle, their current diet, um, lots of different processes in the body. So I believe in the power of food to heal um, the body from disease. Yeah. Now, a good point that you raise there, you're a holistic clinical nutritionist, should have put that in there. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that we don't just tune up and have a five minute visit and you say, look, start losing some weight, off you go, here's a sheet. You look at the whole package thing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It takes time, you know. The human body is so complex. You can't just come in and expect to sit down with me for half an hour and be in and out. Um, yeah. It's a good hour and a half. Indeed. And where are you? I'm located at G's Pharmacy in Teradel, mm -hmm. so right in the middle there. Now for the last couple of months we've been focusing on weight loss and this is weight loss part three. Right. And what, what I'd like you to do is maybe just give a bit of a recap on what we've discussed so far. So let's start off with the digestive system. Absolutely. So one of the key elements, um, one of the pillars to long-term sustainable weight loss is the digestive system and that's one of the um, 10 body systems. So the way we process and digest and absorb our food is imperative to feed and nourish our cells so all 37 trillion cells in the body need to get the nutrients mm -hmm. in order to function properly one of them is to burn fat to make sure your thyroid's being supported so when it comes to digestive health it starts in the mouth it actually starts in the, in the, in the vision yeah. we talked about seeing the food smelling it um, starting to salivate because those enzymes in your saliva um, help to break your food down mm -hmm. so chewing your food really well that's the, really the first stage in the digestive process. Making sure you're eating when you're calm and you're not on the run, you know, when you're stressed. So we want all that blood, all that energy and fire to go to breaking your food down. And then once you chew your food well, hopefully about 30, yeah. 30 chews or so sure. per mouthful, depending on what Imagine you are. Imagine doing that. Yeah, <laughs> depending on what you're eating, um, obviously you're not going to chew a smoothie 30 times. Um, but chewing your food well, and then another big key element for digestive health is not drinking with your food. So try not to drink 15 minutes before your meal, nothing during your meal, and, a, and about 30 minutes or so after your meal. And that's just because in your stomach there's something called hydrochloric acid, and it's very acidic. It works to break your food down. It's step two in the digestive process. So you don't want to dilute that acid with any sort of liquid. Yeah, okay. Putting the food in our mouth is one point. Now let's go on to the next one, which is I think just as important actually, movement or exercise. Absolutely. So, you know, people come to see me oftentimes for weight loss, and that's another key element. It's part of the lifestyle equation, really. So finding something that you really enjoy doing, it could be high impact, it could be low impact, that doesn't really matter. So long as you're getting the body moving, um, it is good to look at your heart rate. So getting um, your heart rate up to about 180 minus your age mm -hmm. is a good range, you know, three to five times a week, even for 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, Okay, bearing in mind that we are exercising regularly, does it give us a bit of poetic license to have something that we might not normally so you know have a bit of a run three or four times a week? Does that let, let me eat six donuts a week or not? Six donuts. Well, <laughs> I think, you know, everything in moderation. Yes. So if you enjoy donuts, by all means, let yourself have a donut. I'm not yeah. sure about six a week, but you know, every once in a while, enjoy that donut and don't feel guilty about it either. But of course, you don't want to be fueling your body with donuts every day no. because that's not going to enable you to keep going with those runs. That's probably how most people fall off the wagon though, isn't it? That um, they limit their food intake, they cut out all the good stuff that they liked. They eat the healthy stuff for, I don't know, a week, two weeks, a month, and then they say, oh, they get the craving back into it, gobble, 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 back on the... That's right. They yeah. get sick of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Every, like I said, everything in moderation, but over time, the more you eat the nutrients that you need, the foods from the soil, the vitamins and minerals, the more um, your body changes and adapts, and the more you start to crave it. So when you sure. have a big feed of six donuts, maybe, yeah. you'll, f you'll feel it. You'll feel terrible, and, yeah. you, and you won't want to do that to yourself again. That could be a good thing, then. 
It could. Yeah. Sometimes that's the way you learn and you grow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know you're a big fan of drinking water. Personally, I'm not. I, I wouldn't drink much water at all. But I was reading an article before you came in, and it said that uh, on this particular weight loss program, that we need to drink a gallon of water a day, which in modern terms is about 3.6 liters. That's a heck of a lot of water. That is a lot of water, 3.6 liters. It, the, the general rule, um, again, everyone's different, so mm -hmm. even your water intake needs to be different. So 30 mils of water per kilo of body weight. So if you weigh 100 kilos, then yes, three liters a day would be optimal. Um, you'd act for, for a whole gallon, you'd have to weigh easily over 100 kilos. Yeah. So if you're having diuretics, you know, c caffeine, several cups of coffee, again, you need to replenish that. If you're sweating a lot as well, you're going to be losing a lot of water, so you want to replenish that but you're right water is one of the key um, elements to long-term sustainable weight loss can too much water be bad for you I mean, if you're drinking a gallon a day uh, there's seven gallons a week is that good for you uh, I think yeah, it really does depend on the individual um, yes you can I think over drink your water mm -hmm. and then it can change the biochemistry in the body your, your electrolyte balance and your mineral balance so you don't you don't want to overdo it either the average person would you say what three or four glasses a day no i don't think that's enough, enough? <laughs> <laughs> no no i'd say the average person probably weighs what 70 kilos yeah. maybe so 70 30 mils per kilo looking at two liters a day okay yeah now often you see people who are overweight and they blame their thyroids oh i've got a faulty thyroid that's why i'm fat is it often the case does the thyroid have a big um, part in weight gain it certainly can, mm. absolutely. And if you have a family history of any sort of hypothyroidism, which is underactive thyroid, it's something you want to get checked. Mm -hmm. um, if your mom or your auntie, grandmother had thyroid issues, you want to stay on top of that. So I, I often ask people their family history just to see what comes up. And if they say, oh yeah, my mom, my grandmother, I usually recommend or, or I'll give them a blood test form to get their thyroid checked. So with thyroid, you want to be looking at your thyroid stimulating hormone, um, your T4, and your thyroid antibodies. So absolutely, you know, some people might blame their thyroid when really their thyroid's functioning fine. Sure. But okay. it's an easy thing to blame. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, something we haven't talked about over the last couple of uh, shows is the pH balance. I thought that was something to do with swimming pools. Well, it certainly does, yeah. actually. But the pH is another big pillar when it comes to weight loss. So pH stands for potential of hydrogen. So on, on this pH scale, zero is very, very acidic, and 14 is very alkaline. So the human body is about usually around a 7.0 two or three mm -hmm. and that's where you want to be so every day just by breathing and um, just by moving about um, the functions of the body create an, a, an acidic environment in the body so we need to counterbalance that every single day by alkalizing mm -hmm. it if the body does get too much too acidic so it goes below that seven then the problem with um, with that is, is the weight gain that can occur. So what happens is the body is pretty amazing. It tries to naturally alkalize itself, and it will do that by pulling the calcium from your bones yep. to try and alkalize it. And calcium is really important when it comes to weight loss because that helps with fat digestion. Sure. I think the average person just listened to you, what you've just said, they're saying, say what? I mean, if you had to put that into, <laughs> if you had to put that into something that I might understand, what would you be saying to me? Because I'd be thinking, yeah, well, what did you just say? Okay, so pretty much you want your body to be alkaline. Yeah. But every day, everything you do, it, it's, it's almost acidic, but by function. Mm -hmm. It wants to be alkaline by design, but acidic by function. So what can you do to make sure that your body is staying alkaline? Well, what we just talked about is one way. Make sure you're getting enough water. Yeah. And make sure your water is a good pH as well. You know, when I went back to the States where I'm from, I saw on the shelves all this water and it said pH balanced. I thought, well, how, that's pretty cool. It said alkaline water. So somehow they've gotten the pH just right in the water. Um, here, you're not going to be testing your water. So do make sure you're getting enough of it. Okay. Now, when we, uh, we talk about weight loss, I was reading an article that said that there are fat-burning foods. 
and there were things like nuts and vegetables and it was mainly nuts and vegetables how do they burn fat is that just a, a marketing slogan fat burning foods or are they really fat burning foods uh, I wouldn't say there's fat burning foods and I'll tell you that is a big trap I believe and mm. and the marketing you know industry for fat burning pills mm. and I've had my mom message me and send me links to, oh can I take this will this work is this good yeah. for me and I tell her mom there is no pill there is no pill there are so many aspects and facets to long-term sustainable weight loss and you're not going to find it in a pill or even a magical food no exactly you know it is about the 37 trillion cells that we have getting the nutrients from the soil that they need to function well and support your thyroid and we've already talked about thyroid and a, a huge recap um, fat burning food okay let's say iodine because iodine is, is imperative for your thyroid mm -hmm. function so 150 micrograms of iodine a day feed that thyroid what it needs um, and it's going to help with your um, metabolism we get that through salt wouldn't we in the main we can, yep. Yeah. Iodized yeah. salt, um, mainly sourced through seaweed, so sea vegetables, um, kelp, spirulina, uh, the seaweed that you might get on the sushi, yeah. <laughs> although that's not quite enough no. iodine. <laughs> so um, the average person is just going to get it through salt? Because the average bloke, for instance, he's going to say seaweed. He's going to eat seaweed. Yeah, th and I get that a lot with clients. Yeah. Um, I, People that don't like eating seaweed, and I don't like to recommend salt. There can be too much mm -hmm. salt. There's so many different types of salt. Is this good salt and not so good salt? There is. You know, the processed white um, bleach salt is not what you want to be using. So what should we be using? I like a good Himalayan rock salt. That pink stuff? Iodized. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um, but yeah, so iodine is really important. You can have a green powder. It's mm -hmm. a good way to get iodine. I have a green smoothie every day. Just scoop, put it in water, shake it up. What about if we're on a diet, and I know you don't like that word diet, but if we're on a, on a weight loss program and we decide that we're going to cut out quite a bit of food because in the main that's what we will do when we try for weight loss, would you recommend taking supplements in the form of pills, you know, vitamin C pills, vitamin D, vitamin E? Is that, is that a good idea or should we be getting our vitamins the natural way through eating? I do believe that we can get everything we need through food. Mm -hmm. However, the soil quality is an issue. So um, supplementing oftentimes with certain things such as iodine, um, because in New Zealand, obviously, our, our soils are deficient in iodine. Um, there's other foods that are hard to get enough through diet, like, for instance, zinc. Zinc's another very common deficiency. So um, I think if you do need to go on a, a specific diet, maybe have food sensitivities, it can be good depending on what you have to exclude to supplement at, at, at times, yes. So if I came along to see you, what sort of tests would, would you be doing on me to show what vitamins or minerals I might be deficient in? That's is, a good is there question. A test? Yes, there is. Yeah. Yes, there is. Um, there's several different ways to test. So one is actually through through a hair test. You can do a vitamin and mineral deficiency, which mm -hmm. I've, I've done before, just to test it out. It's quite interesting to see. Um, another one is actually just a food diary, taking a very extensive, uh, you know, four or five day food diary. Um, and I get that information. I can en then enter that information into my advanced nutrition software. Mm -hmm. And it gives an amazing report breakdown first of all of all your macronutrients your proteins fats and your carbs and then a great report on all your vitamins and mineral deficiencies yeah. and ways to correct them as well you mentioned uh, writing down what you eat in a weight loss program is that a good idea get up write down what you have for breakfast lunch dinner the snacks is that something that you recommend doing Yes, I d I've, I've done it myself just to see what it's like and it is amazing to actually see how much or how little maybe you're eating or mm. what you're eating in a day. It can get quite annoying after a while, I kind of give I up. I imagine it would, yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, I think it's a great tool to, to, to see and evaluate your, your food intake. What about calorie counting, is that a good idea? No. So there, Dr. Libby, who I'm a huge fan of, has written a book called The Calorie Fallacy. Mm -hmm. And it is not about the calories in and calories out. You don't want to be counting those. If anything, uh, you count the nutrients. Yeah. That's a good point because um, what I was going to ask you was that let's just hypothetically say that uh, a guy of my size might want to eat 2,000 calories a day. I, I could get those 2,000 calories from four Moro bars. 
where I could eat three cabbages. Is one as good as the other? Exactly. Empty calories, yeah. nutrient void food mm -hmm. versus nutrient dense superfood. Great for so many things in the body. Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. That's why I don't. I don't like counting calories. Yeah. What about that? Um, that feeling you get when you're on a diet. You've just finished your meal and you're starving. I mean, I know we could, <laughs> <laughs> we've got our dog on a diet at the moment because she's a bit fat, and uh, you can just see she's famished. And yeah, she's going to be famished for quite some time to come, I can might add, but well, how do you get around that? I'm laughing because that's been my husband lately. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've been having meals and he, he's uh, five minutes later, I'm starving and I'm thinking, you've got a worm in your stomach or yeah. something. I don't understand it. Um, in that case, I would question getting that signal to the brain that, that you've had food and that you're full. So it's that leptin that signals that you're satisfied. Mm -hmm. um, so there might be something going on there. but. If you're having a sustainable meal, you know, healthy protein, some fats and fibers that work together to give that, that feeling of fullness, then you shouldn't, you shouldn't be feeling hungry after a meal. No, but I suppose if you uh, I mean, this program is all about weight loss, so we're tuning in and saying, okay, well, you know, I'm overweight, need to lose a bit of weight, so our meals might literally be cut in half. So we're used to eating twice as much, and we're not. Surely we've got to feel hungry. Were you, but the question is, were you eating too much to begin with? Yeah, or? that's right. I was. Yeah. Okay. I, I, okay. So that's why I'm fat. I've been eating too much. You're not. I'm not fat. fat. I'm just pretending I'm <laughs> fat. So let's pretend I was fat. And uh, I've been eating ginormous meals. All of a sudden, come to see you, you've got me down to a, a regular size plate. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be hungry enough for quite some time. You might I'm used be. to all that food. Yeah, you might be because your stomach, you know, that is true. Your stomach can expand and it can get smaller. Yeah. So, yeah, that might be the case. Um, what I'd like to tell people, wait, you know, wait 20 minutes. Yep. Don't eat too fast. We've talked about mm -hmm. that. It's important to allow that food to f get to the cells, to get that feeling of fullness. Oftentimes, you, th you eat and you think, oh, I'm still hungry. Yeah. But once you wait, you actually do sure. get that feeling. Go for a walk. Um, yeah. Is that, um, I wonder then, we talked about not drinking before meals and not drinking during meals. Would we be better off to drink a big glass of water so we still feel a bit fuller before we start eating? Before we eat? Yeah, sure, you can do that. Um, I, I still would wait the 15 minutes, yeah. though. You don't want all that liquid in the stomach and then put food on top of it. Right. How do you stay motivated? I mean, you're motivated because you're in the, in the job. You know, it's your job to motivate people to lose weight or to get a, a healthier lifestyle. I mean, I imagine yourself, I mean, look at you, you're, you're a very fit person, but you must, how do you, how do you motivate yourself, for instance? How are you motivating your husband? And how do you motivate your clients to stay motivated? That's a really good question. And I actually think the answer to that is education. So once people understand a little bit about how the body works and how it's supposed to work and how it, how it runs efficiently, mm -hmm. I think people want to, to start taking better care of themselves. And they want to know, you know, hey, these foods are going to do this for me. I, I want them. So they start to change their mindset about the food. And then the more and more they start eating that food, the better they feel, the more weight that comes off. Um, I had, uh, I saw a, a client's husband this morning and he said, the first thing he said is, my wife has so much energy. And I thought, is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> and so he said, oh, we're walking up the peak and we're doing this and we're going kayaking and she's just a different person. So I think once they start seeing the outcome of, of better, healthier eating, yeah. they, they get hooked. And I think also it's very important for people around you to, to praise you up a little bit, you know, say, hey, you look great. Mm. What are you doing? You know, Absolutely. People, it makes people feel good. But what happens when people plateau? You know, that uh, you, you go on this diet, you're, you're, the weight's dropping off you, and all of a sudden, eh, you're not getting any, you're not losing any more. Why is that? Why does that happen? Um, I think, yeah, it, it depends on the person. So we'd have to see, yeah, w what they're doing, what they're not doing. Um, sometimes, you know, your body does come to a sort of a, a plateau time where it's, it's, it's burned off all of this weight mm. and it's just having a bit of a rest and then it continues to burn off that weight but maybe also you're at your ideal weight yeah so this and, and oftentimes people don't think they are yeah i'll have weight loss people come in say they're coming in for weight loss and they walk through the door and i'm looking at them and i'm thinking i don't think so no. i don't think you need to lose weight yeah. what about um losing weight in a hurry you know 
and I, and I think in the main that's what people want to do don't they, they think geez mm. I'm a bit porky let's lose a bit of weight month time they've only lost a kilo what's the point yeah, there, there really isn't any quick fix. No. So, uh, you know, a kilo a week, I think, would be around about maximum probably where you'd want to be. Yeah. Um, and again, I don't like to keep putting, uh, you know, people on the scale and saying this is your number because it's not about that. It's about how healthy you are. You could be a, l a larger person and internally you're extremely healthy. Sure. And I've seen a lot of bone thin people coming out of McDonald's yeah <laughs> so it's really not about the numbers but it is to most people isn't it most people want to lose they want to see kilos dropping off them and so when you say to people you know I don't know just say I came to see you and I was 20 kgs overweight and I'm saying to you well look I really want to get this off me and I want to get it off quick what would you be realistically telling me that, that it's going to take a year two years to lose 20 kgs is that is that the sort of target you'd be setting for me 20 kgs uh yeah i mean i i don't i don't like to set a real target time mm -hmm. and put that pressure on the individual um you know i think again educating mindset understanding the food and you know just taking it one month one week at a time yeah and, and that's why i like to take measurements for people as well because sometimes the scales don't always you know give the full full story yeah it's it's about how you know your clothes and how you're fitting as well and bear in mind most scales that the average person buys are plus or minus two kg so you could get very depressed oh true getting on them. <laughs> <laughs> so look we're just about out of time uh heather um just what about just maybe recapping what we've talked about today yeah, so we've talked about digestive health, we've talked about water, um, adequate water for the body, um, movement, exercise, and then we talked a little bit about pH. So again, just going back to the pH, the top five foods that are very acidic that you can eat that make the body acidic are dairy, are meat, especially red meat, um, all forms of sugar refined sugars, um, caffeine, alcohol, and processed foods. So 80-20 is the rule. 80% yep. alkalizing foods in a day, 20% acidic foods. You want to keep that, that blood around a 7, 7.3. Make sure it's alkalized or else it will contribute to weight gain. Because remember, your body's going to create those fat stores to carry acids away from the vital organs. It protects the organs. So it does ultimately lead to weight gain. Is there a website we can visit to find out which are the acidic and which are the alkaloid foods that we should be eating? You could easily Google acid alkaline balance yeah. and it will give you a nice list. Get in your greens, get in your water, lemon and lime all very very alkaline even though lemons you think oh wait that's acidic mm -hmm. yes by nature it's acidic but once it's inside the body it has a very alkalizing effect just to remind our listeners heather if we want to come and see you about uh, health matters um nutrition exercise where are you how do we get hold of you so I am located at Juice Pharmacy in Teradel. You can visit my website, foodforlife.co.nz. Give me a call, 027-812-5071, or send me an email at heather at foodforlife.co.nz.